Hi there, I'm Wes Woodbury. I'm with Fundamental Games. I'm just spending a few minutes with you today to share Tabletop Simulator with you. And I wanted to share with you just three things um, to be able to enhance and um, show your game to the world. First thing I'm going to show you is how do you create a game with a background and a tabletop. Second thing I'm going to show you is how do you get a card, a deck of cards into your game because cards are the most dominant form of uh, game mechanism and game components. And then the third one will be um, just showing how to slap a board and maybe a few pawns onto the table. And with that, uh, you'd have your game ready. I'm not going to show you how to upload it to the internet. That's um, a, a different thing. But just getting your game into a digital format so you can show people what it looks like uh, instead of just with some handwritten um, cards or having to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on fancy prototypes. So without further ado, let's get into Tabletop Simulator. All right, so here we are at the main screen of Tabletop Simulator. Um, when you have this program downloaded on Steam, uh, it's very quick to, to figure out where you can find games. Uh, but we're going to run through it real quick with you. We're going to create a single player table. And I've got all this down, stuff downloaded here, but all you have to do is close that. And there you go, you have a game board table. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you, like I said, was how to create a background and a tabletop. So for a background, you can use any image you want, but the best images you can use are what's called an HDRI format. And all you have to do to change it is you go to backgrounds and you can pick the pre-generated ones they have. I mean, if you're not looking for anything fancy, but if you are really trying to make a thematic impact when you're sharing your game with people, what you want to do is go to backgrounds and custom. And once you've got custom, you can pick files from your computer. You just dig into whatever things you have saved. And so we're going to use a background from a recent game that I was playing around with. Um, so we'll go to playtesting files, explore, and we're going to go to background A. So background A, we're going to load it. And it's going to be an option for cloud or local. Cloud, cloud is when you want to prepare your game for the internet. Local is just if you only plan to use it for yourself. Um, so I'm just going to use local this time around. Uh, so here we go. We've now changed the image. This is, uh, and you can kind of back around to see. So if you use a bad image, you're going to get a bad background. But if we um, use a better image, so for example, I go back here and play test and use background B, for example. And we'll import that. So now we have a little bit better background. So the last game I created was a space themed game and I wanted to have kind of a nebula background. So there you have it, that easy to make a background. Second thing is your tabletop. So tabletops, you can only make unique tabletops on um, rectangular or square tables. So let's pop into tables. Um, and if you want a custom table, you can use either one of these. So let's say I want to make a uh, custom rectangle. Uh, the same thing, you just have to have a file saved on your computer with the tabletop that you like. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go and find uh, uh, a game in here. Uh, we'll pull it from my... Um, I made one ca from about caffeine, so called caffeinated. So let's grab uh, one that I saved here. So I saved a tabletop background that I put together through Photoshop, but you can really use any image that you find that you're allowed to use. And, um, and then I just slop it on the table. So there we go. Now this one isn't quite um, to plan here. I might have made this one as a square. So let me just pull up um, tables, custom square, find my table, go into my game, and see if it looks better as a square. I can't remember. It's been a while. There you go. Looks better as a square. So the ratio of your picture, it'll automatically resize it to the rectangle or square. So you're going to want to make sure if you do build a tabletop that it uh, does reflect exactly what you have going on there. All right. So I'm going to get rid of the back, get rid of the table image just so that you don't have to see that as we're looking here. Um, and so that was the first thing I wanted to show you. Second thing I wanted to show you was how to make a deck of cards. Uh, now to make a deck of cards, you have the option to go to components and you can put in a regular deck of cards. I mean, just throw it up there like that. And uh, the cool thing about this is you can zoom and flip and go through and see all the cards that you're going to play with. But if you want to play with a standard deck of cards, you've seen that a thousand times. So let's get rid of that. 
And what we want to do is we want to build a custom deck. Uh, and a custom deck requires you to have a very specialized um, PNG format that shows every single card type up to 70 cards. And so what I had to do is I had to go in and um, basically I had to create a PNG off the tabletop simulator profiler. And so we're going to use a deck of cards from Legends of Novus. And that's one of the games that I'm promoting uh, very soon here. So if we go to Legends of Novus and we go to my TTS file, which is tabletop simulator file, we're going to pull up the creature deck. And when we select that, again, I can do cloud or local. And um, you're always going to want to do cloud if you're going to put it on the internet. But you also have to select a back for your deck. So I'm going to go back into my Legend of Novus TTS file and I'm going to go for um, encounter back. I should have that in here. No, not quite. Um, no, I have that saved in my primary files as card backs. So I'm going to go back into here, encounter back, and select that. So what it has here is the PNG that I created, and th that takes a bit more uh, time to show you how to do that, but um, once you've created that PNG of all your cards, uh, that's what you put as the face, and as the back, you put in your generated card back. And then here, the actual width and height of your cards does matter, because um, if you don't use the right format, your cards will be completely out of shape. So I'm just going to pull up and see what size my um, encounter deck was. So my creature deck or encounter deck looks like it was one, two, three, four. So it was 10 cards wide, and this is important, by four cards deep. So it was like a grid of cards, and I had a total of 36 cards in this particular build. So if you don't have any of those numbers right, your entire deck will look awful, awful, awful. Um, but if you do have it right, then you will get the deck of cards that you want. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these bigger just so you can see it and you can adjust the size of your cards and the size of your components. Uh, but there you have it. We have ourselves a Legends of Novus deck. Um, and you can search through these cards. You can filter through them. You can see all the awesome artwork automatically transposed. And you can zoom in again with that um, uh, function that you have in the, the holding the alt key lets you zoom, zoom into any card. And so there you have it. We have a deck of cards all that fast. I didn't have to import each image individually. I had to do that beforehand through the tabletop simulator um, PNG creator. But then you get all your faces all at once. And if you flip over any card, you see the card back. And there's so many great things you can do with this to save time compared to real decks. I mean, um, just being able to group things back together, being able to shuffle them all within seconds, being able to draw a hand of five cards and see what your randomization gets you. Um, Tabletop Simulator is just amazing for all the different things that you can do. All right, so there's a deck of cards. And then what else was I going to teach you? One more thing I was going to teach you is how to make a board and a couple components. So to make a board, you'd go to Objects and Components again. And you can see here we have an, a Boards. So there's pre-generated boards only for a few items, checkers, chess, Chinese checkers, and backgammon. What we want to do is make a custom board, and there you have it. Just like anything else, you have to have a pre-generated image. And as long as your uh, image is in whatever shape you like, the board will form in that shape. So if you have a hexagonal board, it will automatically reassess itself to hexagonal. For me, let's go back into Legends of Novus. And we're going to go into primary files and actually, no, we're going to go into map. Um, so in my map, I have a, a final board map. So I've already determined that this is how I want my board to look. And I import it and it quickly calculates what it wants to do. And it creates a board for you. And just like the cards, you can make this board as small or as large as you want. Um, just keeping in mind that the board is immovable. So once you get the board on there, you actually can't move it. It auto centers on the table because it believes it's the focal point. Um, some people have boards that are more um, designed to be a board for each player. And if you were doing that, instead of making an actual board, you'd want to make a custom tile instead. So I could make a tile just like I made my board using my map, uh, going through here, map, and I could, if I wanted to give every player their own map, for example, 
I could, um, I don't know where to go. Final board map. Let me do that local. You could make the back something else if you wanted to, but there we go. I could give each player a little map of Novus if I wanted to. And I could control C and just like anything else, control V, I could copy it, I could paste it, etc., etc. And all the players get their own map, just in case, you know. Because I can't do that in real life, but I can do that digitally. All right, and then last but not least, objects. So what if I want to give my table a component? Well, there's so many components you can choose from. There's pre-generated 3D figures that you could use if you just want a generic knight um, to play on your table. Um, but if you want to make your own thing, there's custom figurines. So you could go through and just get a generic player pawn and play with that. But that's kind of boring. If you're going to do something in the digital landscape, why not do something cool? Um, you can have this guy that's pre-generated or you can do your own. So doing your own, again, is involved in um, so figurines a custom standee for example whoops try that again custom standee and this will um, shape to what you have designed in your png so if you have a png file that's round a png file that's a star etc uh, it's going to shape to that so let's go in here and check it out um, i'm going to go to my character file and i have standees pre-generated for all of my characters so let's say we want to get vin into the battle here we import Vin's PNG. Um, you could do a different back image, so some, some uh, standees have fronts and backs. Um, actually, you have to put a front and a back, so my mistake there. Character sheet, go in here, find Vin, select, local, and on the back we're going to put Vin as well, uh, just so that he's on both sides of the standee. So we go back to my character sheet, um, go back to Vin, and to save yourself time, you, 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 I don't have it on here, but to, to save yourself time, you'd want to put everything that you want to do with your tabletop simulator into a single um, folder, and then you don't have to look like I do. But here you go. Um, you can scale it up and down, make it bigger or smaller again. You can rotate it left and right. Um, but just like that, you've got a beautiful standee to showcase your items with. Hey, look, there's bin number one. And I could copy this and paste it and paste it, get them all the same size, and then I could right click, customize it, and change VIN to be somebody else, so that I'm getting all of my standees the same size instead of having to reshape them separately. So if we want to get, um, let's say Barrick wants to join the party, so I go into uh, Druid standee, which is Barrick, and bring him into the action. And we're, I think I left Vin on one side, so let's rotate this and we should see Barrick. There he is, ta-da! Uh, so there you have it. In just a few minutes you've seen how fast we can implement a deck, a board, and standees. And that will be uh, basically the components for many, many games out there. So you can get your game into Tabletop Simulator in literally a matter of minutes, provided you've um, got all your JPEGs and and uh, PNGs in, in order. And if you're not sure what those mean, then you probably won't be able to do this tabletop simulator your own yet. Um, but it's just so amazing how fast you can get your ideas to the table. And then if you do have card design changes, instead of having to reprint and go to the, to the local print shop or to use up ink of your own, you can go ahead and alter your text, alter your icons, alter your art, and just see how is my game going to look if I do that. And that's why I absolutely love Tabletop Simulator, and um, hopefully I can teach you more in the future. But I just wanted to spend a few minutes to show you the very basics of what this program has to offer. Alright, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.